So today we're going to work on a procedural map generation for a 2D tile map called a smoothed map. So what it looks like is we're going to pick random values to determine whether we're going to have floor or rock in the core of the map. And then on the outside, we'll have a border, so it's enclosed. And then we'll go ahead and smooth out the map which will look like this. And we can smooth it a few times, and we end up with the cavern. And as you can see, there's obviously a few drawbacks or advantages, whichever way you see it. Uh, you're not guaranteed to always have every area of the map connected, but maybe that's exciting and what you want for your game. So you just have to know what the drawbacks and what the advantages of each type of map generation are. So. Uh, let's get into it. So we first off we have just a tile map node with a camera just so we can see it better just nothing special about the camera. Our tile set is just an image with two single tiles. Uh, when you look at it we have the floor and the rock same as my other video and we're going to just get into the script because there's really not much to look at in the nodes. So we enumerate the tiles, uh, the rock and the floors. We have a map size. And then we're going to have a number that we will set in the inspector to uh, show how many floors we want in our map. And we'll, I'll kind of show you later on what you want to have that set at. Because uh, if you don't have that set at a good number, it can make pretty bad caverns, bad levels. So our neighbor directions, we'll, I'll explain that a little bit more later. So in our ready function, we're just going to randomize everything. Uh, so it gives us a different map every time. And then we'll get into our make map function. I'm going to skip process for right now. So to make the map, like I said, we're going to only set the core with uh, values, our different types of floor or rock. So we're going to exclude the first one and exclude the last one in both. Then we'll pick a random number between 0 and 100. And if that number is less than the percentage of floors that we want, then we'll set it to a floor. The set tiles, a method from the tile map node. And if it's not below that percentage, we'll set it to a rock. And then we have to go back and get the borders. So this looks a little counterintuitive, but there's two different types of for loops here. The first one is a range. And if you look at the Google, or the Godot docs, you'll show that you, when you have a range, it goes from the first number to just before the last number. It doesn't include the last number. So current map size, uh, we had it as 50. Minus 1 is 49 and it's only going to go up to 48. This one, though, is a for loop with an array, and it's going to do exactly the number that uh, I that you type in. So it's going to do 0, and if I want it, or it's going to do 49 here. So it would do 50 minus 1. Uh, then we'll just, like I said, set them all to rock. This one does the left and the right sides. This one does the top and the bottom. So then we'll get in and we'll smooth that map out. Again, we want to use the range of just the core. So it's copy and paste from up above. And then we have a variable just to count how many neighbors to each cell are walls. So we're going to loop through, count how many walls there are, and we'll count in this for loop. So uh, again, we are going to use an array, but it was really messy to put eight vector twos down here. So I have them all up here in the neighbor direction. And this just helps us find each neighbor, all eight neighbors to each cell that we're going to look at. Then we're going to get that cell, um, the current tile that we're looking at. We're going to add to that direction, and then we're going to get whether it is a rock. We'll just see if it is equal to a rock. If it is, we'll add to the counter. 
and then we'll see if that if the middle tile has more than four neighbors we'll change it to a rock if it has less than four neighbors we'll set it to a floor and after you do that to every single cell in the map this is what it looks like again I usually smooth three, maybe four times. I don't want it to be too refined, uh, but uh, I'm doing it manually right now in the physics process. I just have a couple of inputs connected. Uh, that way I can show you guys while I'm talking about it. Uh, but usually you would just have this all set up in the map, ready, make map, just get it all done. But again, I wanted to go back to the percentage. I have it set to about 53 right now. If you set it too low, you can see what happens pretty quickly. I mean, it doesn't start bad, but it just makes it all rock. So you can't go too low. And the same is if you go too high, uh, it's just going to turn it into one great big room. So that's obviously not very exciting. I'd say... 50 is probably about your low end, uh, and then 55, I suppose. It's There's really not a big range. See, even just 50 makes for pretty small rooms. Uh, so I wouldn't go much outside of the 50 to 55 range. Otherwise, you're just going to have problems. Uh, I guess 56 is... that's an okay dungeon, but... So just don't go too high. Don't go up into the 60s and the 70s because, like I said, it will just make one great big room.